Okay, we're going to take a look at calculating slope, and there's more than one way to calculate slope. So the purpose of this video is calculating slope using rise over run, and we'll come back to this. But before we get going too far, let's make sure you understand exactly what calculating slope is. This line has a certain degree of slant or incline to it, so slope is going to describe the amount of slant or incline. Think of the roof of a house that definitely has a slope to it or an incline and different houses would have different degrees of slope. So this green line definitely has a way different slope or slant than this red line. The blue line seems pretty similar to the red line but it's probably slightly different once we do the calculation. So the method we're going to use in this is slope using rise over run. And as I go through this example, you'll see that when I say rise over run, I'm talking about the change in y values over change in x values, or as your science teacher might to say, change in y over change in x. But let's go ahead and calculate these three lines slope using rise over run, and I think you'll get it. So I'm looking at line A, the red line, and the very first thing I'm going to write on my paper is rise over run. Every time you're doing a slope calculation, that should be the very first thing you put on your paper. And now from here, you just choose a point that you would like to start at. So I would like to start at this point, and I'm going to travel towards this point. I'm going to count my rise. In other words, as I travel from here to here, how far up or down do I go? And to get there, I would have to go up two units. So my rise is positive two but I still have to get over here, so my run is my change in x values. In other words, how far do I have to travel left or right? So if I rose two units, one, two, three, four, five, I had to run or move to the right five units. So it's a rise of two and a run of five, or a change in y over a change in x of two over five. And by the way, a positive 2 over a positive 5 is a 2 fifths because a positive divided by a positive is a positive. <clears throat> now let's say a different person looked at this problem and they said, hey, I would like to start at this point and then travel to this point. They're going to get the same answer and they would start off by saying rise over run and now to go from here to here my change in y, or my rise, I'd have to lower down two units. So my rise would be negative two, and my run, traveling to the left, my change in x in the negative direction would be a negative five. A negative two divided by a negative five is a positive two-fifths, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I've got two different ways but they're still arriving at the same answer. And, and by the way, if my slope is two-fifths, I can continue to count that. This says rise of two, run of five. So if I go from this point, rise of two, run of five, one, two, three, four, five, I land on that line again. If I do it another time, rise of two, run of five, there's another dot that would land on that line. And I could keep doing that, rise of two, run of five, and I could just keep doing that, and that would just extend the line, because once you know the slope, the slope stays the same for the entire line. Let's turn our sights to line B, which is this line right here, and if I'm going to calculate the slope, the very first thing I would say is, hey, on my paper goes rise over run. That starts my brain thinking down the right path. Now then I select two points. Here are two obvious points and I have to travel from one to the other. So I'm going to choose to travel from here to here but someone else could choose to travel from here to here and that would also be fine. So as I travel from here to here my rise two, three, four, five, six, is actually lowering by 6 on the y-axis, or a change in y of negative 6. Then from here to here, 
I have a run of positive 2. A negative 6 divided by a positive 2 ends up giving me a negative 3. And some people would maybe call that a negative 3 over 1 so they can keep it in fraction form. And so what this is telling me is on this green line, I will always fall 3 and move to the right 1. Let's try that out. I go down 3, move to the right 1, I'm still on the line. Change in y of negative 3, change in x of positive 1, I'm still on the line. So that slope is going to work forever and ever in any direction on that line. And if somebody else traveled from here to here, their work might look slightly different, but they would end up with the same answer that I have right there. All right, let's finish up with line C. And in this case, I might have to be a little bit more thoughtful about the points I pick. I'm going to pick this point and this point. To go from here to here, I do a rise over a run. Rise is the change, whether it's up or down in my y value. So I have a rise of positive 1 and a run of positive 4. So my slope of that line is 1 fourth. Remember someone else could have used different points. For example, let's say someone used this point and this point, and they decided to travel from here to here. Their work would look a little different, but we'll agree on the same answer at the end. To go from here to here, my rise is actually a fall of negative 2 because I had to go down 2 units on the y-axis. Then I had to go over on the x-axis in the negative direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. A negative 2 divided by a negative 8. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, and that reduces to 1 fourth. The key, I believe, is to write rise over run to start your process, then choose two points and say I'm going to travel from one point to the other point and just fill in your rise and your run on that trip. That's it, folks.